nurses in many different areas of practice encounter clients who have iron deficiency anemia. Let's do a quick overview of this condition. Hemoglobin is the major functional constituent of red blood cells. It is a protein made up of iron, bilirubin, and amino acids, and it has an affinity for oxygen. When the oxygen enters the bloodstream, it attaches to hemoglobin for transportation throughout the body. Without adequate red blood cells or hemoglobin, a person's oxygen carrying capacity is diminished. When hemoglobin is reduced because of a deficiency of iron, the client is diagnosed with iron deficiency anemia. The normal hemoglobin for adult males is 14 to 17.4 grams per deciliter. The normal hemoglobin for adult females is 12 to 16 grams per deciliter. Risk factors for iron deficiency anemia are inadequate intake or absorption of iron, blood loss and hemolysis, and chronic renal failure. Malabsorption is usually associated with disorders of the duodenum. What factors might affect iron absorption? Antacids can interfere with dietary iron absorption, and so can substances found in tea and coffee. Sources of blood loss include gastrointestinal conditions and heavy menstrual bleeding. In addition, pregnancy, delivery, and lactation pose risk for women. Eating a diet with adequate iron is the best way to prevent iron deficiency anemia. So what are some foods that are rich in iron? Examples of foods that are good sources of iron are red meats, fish, dried fruit, beans, peas, dark green vegetables, and iron-enriched grains. When hemoglobin is low, three compensatory mechanisms are triggered in an attempt to transport adequate oxygen to the cells. The heart and respiratory rates increase. Blood is shunted from the skin, gastrointestinal tract, and kidneys to the brain and to the heart. And the kidneys produce more erythropoietin, a hormone that stimulates red blood cell production by the bone marrow. The compensatory mechanisms explain some of the signs and symptoms of anemia, which include tachycardia, pallor, fatigue, dizziness with position changes, and inflammation of the tongue called glossitis, and the lips called chelitis. People who have mild iron deficiency anemia might be asymptomatic. Blood tests used to diagnose iron deficiency anemia include RBC count, hemoglobin, hematocrit, serum iron level, ferritin level, and total iron binding capacity. With iron deficiency anemia, all of these results will be low, except total iron binding capacity, which will be high. When anemia is caused by inadequate iron intake, dietary modifications might be enough to correct the problem. Or, iron supplements in the form of ferrous sulfate and iron dextran might be prescribed. Because some people are allergic to iron dextran, a test dose should be given before initiating therapy. Iron dextran is injected into a large muscle mass using the Z-Track technique to keep it from seeping back through the needle track and staining the skin. What information would be important when a client has iron deficiency anemia? The history should include the client's usual dietary intake and any factors that affect the nutritional status. Ask about symptoms such as fatigue, shortness of breath, palpitations, rapid respirations, and dizziness. The physical examination includes assessment of vital signs and the color of the skin and conjunctiva. For clients who have dark skin, look for pallor of the conjunctiva and nail beds. Inspect the tongue and lips for inflammation. Your nursing diagnosis will include activity intolerance, risk for injury, imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements, and deficient knowledge. Your nursing care would include what interventions? Explain to clients how anemia affects activity tolerance and that it should improve with treatment. Meanwhile, encourage them to pace themselves and allow for rest periods. If dizziness is a problem, teach them to change positions slowly and avoid prolonged standing. If the diet is inadequate in iron, it may be deficient in other nutrients as well. Explain the components of a well-balanced diet. Provide a list of foods that are high in iron. Help clients identify iron-rich foods that are most acceptable to them. Because iron deficiency is treated on an outpatient basis, client teaching about iron supplements is especially important. 
Key points about ferrous sulfate include enhancing absorption by taking the drug with water or juice rather than milk, coffee, or tea. Clients should dilute liquid iron preparations and drink them through a straw to prevent staining the teeth. Ferrous sulfate turns the stools black and can cause nausea and constipation, so be sure that your clients know what to expect. If increasing fluid, fiber, and exercise do not prevent constipation, the practitioner might prescribe a stool softener. And, because citric acid increases the absorption of iron sulfate, which kinds of juice are best to take iron supplements with? Vitamin C can enhance iron absorption, so tomato juice and orange juice are good choices.